Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to What Is Naruto's Born God Level, the movie. And I know what you're thinking, you've been gone a little bit, I've been gone for like a day and a half, relax. I was just editing all these movies so I can get them out, and then I'll be making new what ifs coming tomorrow or the day after. Along with another separate movie, which I'll just tell you, yes, it's What If Deku Was Born God Level. Not, not, <laughs> What If Deku Was A Demigod. I decided I can actually remake it now, I've got all the issues sorted, so I'm going to remake it, brand new, different storyline and everything, better storytelling, and yeah, it'll probably end up being two hours, three hours, but that is up to you guys if you want to watch it, but you guys have absolutely enjoyed this what if, I mean, love this what if, so yeah, please like, subscribe, comment down below, share it with my friends and family, go follow me on Instagram, go f add me on Snapchat, go down in the description, and f subscribe to my thumbnail artist, because we're doing a little competition, after I make it, this next what if he's going to make it, and I'm going to make the one he just made. So, yeah, and you guys decide what one you like better. Other than that, guys, see you in a bit. Peace out. Bye. We go to a cold and dark night in the Leaf Village. The Nine Tails is attacking, but thankfully, due to the fall for Cargo's insane efforts, a rogue shinobi was subdued, but he escaped, and also, the Nine Tails was somewhat put under control. He managed to make it back just in time to see his son be born and to his shock when his baby boy opened his eyes and began to cry. His eyes were purple. Minato immediately recognises this as the, the, the Renegade. But he knows that he doesn't have a time to panic or time to think about this as the Nine Tails is immediately attacking. He manages to save his son's life by him and his wife being impaled but it wasn't in vain as the fourth Akage activates the Reaper Death Seal and ends up sealing the entirety of the Nine Tails inside his son, believing that with the running gun his boy will be able to control it. As this baby boy, whose name is Naruto Uzumaki, is laying there crying, he looks out of the corner of his eye and, unknown to Minato, the world makes sense to him. He sees this man getting killed and he doesn't know who this man is but he feels a connection to him and that makes him cry even louder, lose, con lose control of his emotion. He begins to cry loud, his power leaks out, the ground shakes and he puts his hand out pointing towards the reaper. His purple renegade eye begins to glow as the reaper's soul, its very foundation is ripped from it and being absorbed into Naruto. Naruto completely absorbs this reaper or should I say Soul Reaper, or Grim Reaper, whatever way you think about it, <laughs> I don't know I said Soul Reaper. And finally, the attack has ended, with Naruto becoming the Jujuriki of the Nine Towers and absorbing a Grim Reaper's soul. The third Akage, also known as Huruzen, finally shows up and sees Naruto laying on the ground. He picks him up and the only thing he can think is, damn I got it early, a Minato might have survived. And it finally happens, Naruto opens his eyes, revealing that he has a running gun. Due to this, the third Akagi immediately recognises that Naruto just is in danger from people for attacking him for being the fourth Akage son. He's in immediate danger from people attacking him in search of the running gun. And that's when the third Akage chooses that he will look after him for now and also calls his old student, Jiraiya. Informs him that Minato is dead, but his son has the running gun. So, the third Akari tells him if he has anything to do, wrap up now, immediately get back to the village. <clears throat> because he's going to have to raise Naruto, but it's no big rush. Let him get what he actually needs to be done as the third Akari will step in for him till then. Due to this, Naruto is raised by the third Akari. <coughs> he's raised by the third Akari. And lives with him, but however, the villagers still hate him, but it's less open than usual. Normally, he shows verbal insults, but one day, this man got drunk. It was a shinobi, a group of them at least. And one of, and one of them said, You, de you, de you demon bat, you killed the Hokage. And he throws a massive right hook at Naruto. Naruto eats it, it hits him dead on in his face, and he does it. As the man starts screaming, Naruto, he, Naruto, he punched Naruto that hard, but Naruto's body being so tough, he broke his hand. He begins screaming, the demon pra attacked me, the demon pra attacked me. Some who are watching this, I know that the third Okage is the one who was raising Naruto. He says, oh, why do people always go from what they know ain't going to work? But 
Another shinobi whipped at Kuna and lunged at Naruto, attempting to actually slice his throat. Naruto, at a simple reflex out of his training with the third Okage, dodges out the way and throws a right hook, hitting this person dead on in his nose. This sends him flying from one side, of the one side of the village to the other, and as he's tumbling, his nose has been literally shattered. As he's tumbling, he's broke his legs, his arms, his ribs, and he lands on the other side. He gets hospitalised from this for like three weeks, and everyone learns their lesson, don't fuck with Naruto. That was when Naruto was about four. The third Okage has only been teaching him somewhat Taijutsu now, but they decide, let's start with some ninjutsu. After learning that Naruto has every single chakra nature, the third Okage smacks it in. You're just like me. And they start Naruto off with a simple water bullet jutsu. First try, Naruto aces it. And the third Okage congratulates him and goes, wow, you did it, blah, blah, blah. But then Naruto does it again, and again, and again. The third Okage is so confused, as I bet you're wondering, why is the third Okage confused? Naruto did it without any hand signs. But, after seeing this, they begin to work on other jutsus, and not only did they learn that Naruto can control the elements, like earth, the, like he can control earth, wind, water, fire, lightning, without any hand signs but he can control it freely but after he does a jutsu and learns it with hand signs he can then do that again with no hand signs instantaneously we now go to naruto's fifth birthday and this is the day that jirai actually arrives in the village naruto's sitting in the third akaga's office as that's the only place the third akaga really wants him there to keep him safe and when jirai walks in he sees naruto and a warm feeling hits his chest he immediately gets reminded of Minato and he sees Naruto's eyes and thinks, Ugh, oh, Nagato. He walks over to, to Naruto and says, Hey there Naruto, I'm Jiraiya. I'm your goddad, you're going to be living with me today. The third Okage smiles and she, he goes to Naruto, This is the man I told you about. Naruto's eyes light up a little bit and he says, Cool. Naruto begins walking and he holds onto Jiraiya's hand as Jiraiya's guiding him out of the village, not the village, out of the... Hokage's office to get to his house. That's when Jiraiya feels it. N nature energy? What? He begins to scan Naruto's like chakra source and he says, I Incredible. I can't sense the end of his chakra, but also, he has, he's in sage mode, but he doesn't even realise it. I'm not going to push too much on this now, but I'm definitely going to take him to Mount Miyaboku one day. Naruto is taken out of the leaf village on Jiraiya for four years of training to the point he's nine and where he would return to the academy. Throughout this journey, Naruto learnt hundreds if not thousands of jutsus. Of course the Renegar, I'm uh, not the Renegar, he learnt how to use his Renegar, he learnt how to use it, he learnt the Rasengan, he learnt the Flying Ragon Jutsu, and he's already been informed about who his father is. So he felt like him learning the Jutsu was basically his father passed on his will. He learnt Hundreds, all he learnt multiple juices that Jaya knows, and due to him being able to freely use them afterwards, he became a beast. But we get to the day that Naruto returns back to the leaf village after the third Okage is heard. Also, on his trip, Naruto Naruto had to kill some people to just Jiraiya's dismay. Naruto grew up differently. He never once felt fear due to his power, and due to the way he has lived, he has no problem when he has to kill someone, but it doesn't mean he does it for fun, he only kills someone and there's no other option. And during this trip, with Jirai helping him slowly, he managed to build a conversation with the Ninetales, and due to Naruto's overwhelming chakra, the Ninetales couldn't really interfere with him. Instead, the Ninetales couldn't really subdue Naruto, and they began talking when Naruto was about six. First Kuruma was like, get this brat away from me, but with Naruto's constant efforts, he began to actually have a conversation with Naruto, and very quickly, they became friends, revealing their names to each other. As soon as he returns to the village, he finds out that he's the third Akage who promoted him to Joni, hearing about his amazing adventures with Jiraiya, but he still has Naruto to a role in the academy. So guys, I'm so itchy! Oh, you know what, I'm gonna have to stop using... Ow! He enrolls the in first in the first day of the, of the academy, and he meets a boy named Sasuke Ichiha. They end up getting along, but 
One thing that made clear to everyone that Naruto is just a level above them. But some people remember him from his parents saying he's a demon brat. So not everyone is in love with him, but some of the some people are. We now time skip to the night of the Achiha massacre. Naruto is just laying there, and Naruto doesn't know why he can, but he can always just sense where people are. This is the sage mode that he doesn't realize is always active, and that's what happens. He senses a spike in bloodlust, and someone that shouldn't be in the village is in there, and it's at Sasuke's house. He jumps out of his he jumps out of his bed and jumps f f onto his roof and jump and ha takes a massive leap flying across the leaf village and lands there. He lands in front of Itachi and Itachi goes N Naruto as him and Nar him and Naruto and Sasuke are friends. Naruto has been to Sasuke's house and he goes Itachi, what are you doing? Itachi goes, you don't understand. This is for Sasuke. And he lunges towards Naruto, attempting to knock him out. Keep in mind, no one really he doesn't really know how strong Naruto is. Naruto blocks his punch and ends up grabbing Itachi by his arm, his hand, his wrist and his shoulder, slamming him into the ground. He places a seal a seal and jutsu on Itachi at this point and he says, where's the other person I can sense? He disappears on a body, flip, body flicker and he appears next to this masked man who we would know to be Toby or Abito. And he says, who are you? Get out of my friend's, get out of my friend's section. And he boots a beater in the face. If you're wondering, how could he land this? Because Naruto was moving at insane speeds. And lucky for him, this, and due to this, he actually managed to land on a decent hit. A beater goes into his comedian mode, and Naruto takes another swing. Damn it, I can't interact. No, don't think. So he's, you, I'm guessing he's used his eye, because Naruto could see the Sharingan saying, Hmm, the Ginko Sharingan, I've heard your eye talk about it. But I've also heard my eyes far superior. Now, Naruto begins channeling his chakra in a different way. Instead of seeping it through his chakra network, he, he lets it seep out into his skin. And this pure base chakra vanishes to interact with Obito, sending him flying across the village. Due to this insane damage he just felt, Naruto also didn't keep up with it, he sat throwing combos after combos, rupturing organs, breaking ribs, I'll beat her run away. And Sasuke and Naruto runs over to Itachi. He picks him up by his collar and slams him into the ground. How could you? That's your little brother, this is your family, you're killing them. And Itachi ends up revealing that he's sick and he did this to save Sasuke from the leaf village. As in this in, in this version the third Akagi didn't say, okay, he killed the Ichiha clan. Danzo ended up pressuring Itachi to do it. After hearing that Itachi's sick, Naruto says she should have just said that. He ends up summoning up the king, the king of Hell and chucks Itachi in it. Itachi actually screams, no, I'm so stop! But then he gets spat back out. He says, all my physical injuries are gone, but my illness is still there. Naruto ends up stopping and thinking for a second. Hmm. Hmm. Dry told me about it, but I've never really tried doing it. He puts his hand forwards, mixing his nature energy, his insane amount of track rat, chronomized track rat, and his running on abilities. He begins he begins healing Itachi's injury. This is a technique that his Dry's old teammates Unado used. And as Naruto does it, a weird curse seal spreads throughout his body and meets on his forehead, becoming a purple triangle. Itachi recognises as the Byakugo seal, and eventually he's fully healed. Itachi apologises to Naruto and actually thanks him for getting him out of the dance's control, giving him a sense of reality, and says that he's always welcome at their home. This means that the Uchiha clan doesn't die, but Itachi does admit to his parents what happened and what he was being forced to do, and his parents said it's fine now. You didn't do it, thankfully. Thanks for Naruto, at least. And with this, everything goes pretty normal. We now go to the last day of the, attack of the academy. Naruto easily finishes first, but Mitsuki says to him, if you want to become a Jonin, blah, 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 as no one knows what Naruto actually can do. And he said, if you want to become a Jonin, then you have to steal the sacred scroll of sealing. Naruto immediately recognises this as a trap and instead flips it. And he says, okay then, I'll do it. And the place where he's meant to meet Mitsuki, 
he doesn't. As he told the third Akage what was going on, so the third Akage tells Mitsuki that Naruto stole the scroll, you need to go find him. And when he finally finds Naruto, Naruto's standing there waiting for him, saying, Do you really think I'm that stupid? Stealing the secret scroll, stealing for that. Mitsuki begins laughing, saying, You damn brat, you had one job. I'm gonna kill you, so you don't get to tell the rest of what happened, and I'm gonna tell everyone, though, you nine told. You nine toes for brat attacked me, losing control. Na Naruto isn't phased, and Mitsuki says, Don't you know you're the nine toes jinjuriki? You're the jinjuriki of that demon. Naruto gets pissed off, and he says, Demon? Kuruma isn't a demon. He's just misunderstood by all you lot trying to use him for his power. Mitsuki begins laughing, saying, How would you know? Naruto, for the first time, with him actually defending Kurama, the final link was made, a friend, a full-fledged friendship, a partnership. And Naruto ends up entering KCM1, showing off to Mitsuki that Kurama isn't a demon. And he then goes on to beat the absolute living shit out of Mitsuki, throwing combos left and right. And then he actually ends up impaling Mitsuki's stomach, not fatally, but if he don't get attention soon, he will be. After this, Naruto gets placed in the Team 7, and the team is Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. When he get hears this about him and Sasuke, they fist bump, and he go, they both go, yes! And Sakura goes, oh, Sasuke, Sasuke, and she goes, I guess Naruto's alright. As in this version, she doesn't hate Naruto, as Naruto's shown to be a top, top dog, but she's just always been having a little crush on Sasuke. They get given Kakashi, and of course, oh, he's late again. But when he finally shows up, he sees Naruto and says, it's sen Sensei's kid, and them eyes. No one really tries to pick on Naruto for his eyes, and oh my god, itchy! Oh. But yeah, and he, and Kakashi goes, this is going to be interesting. He tells all of them to show up tomorrow at 5 in the morning and don't eat breakfast or they'll be sick. But Jirai already tells Naruto it's a trap, so Naruto still eats. Naruto, they finally show up to the field and when Kakashi shows up three hours late and it's blank gives him an excuse, he tells them about the bell test. Sakura says that there's on, there's only two bells. One of us what about one of the other person? And Kakashi goes, I don't see how that's my problem still. And they say begin. Naruto doesn't run away. And Kakashi says, I've heard you're strong, but just because you're strong doesn't mean you need to be cocky. And Naruto says this ain't cocky cockiness, this is confidence in my abilities. And it begins. Kakashi runs at Naruto, as he isn't really a makeup paradise. He does heard that Naruto has been promoted to Joni, but he's still doing the test. So either way, he is going to be on the squad. And Naruto, Naruto is easily dodging this. He's not even paying attention. He's looking at the weather. He's dodging it left and right, left and right. And this goes on for about ten minutes. Even when Kakashi begins using Jutsu, that fire style, earth style, nothing happens. And he begins laughing, saying, This is the best you got, Kakashi, of the Sharingan, the copy ninja who's copied over a thousand jutsu. I am ashamed, I am bored. And Kakashi, hearing this, gets vexed. And he loses control slightly of his emotions, and he yells, Chidori! He begins rushing towards Naruto. He only done this because he thought that Naruto was going to dodge. That's when he realizes Kakashi, Naruto isn't moving. Wait, it's too late. N no! Damn it! He doesn't have time to cancel this jutsu, to cancel this Jidori. And instead, he just winked, he, he nearly closed his eyes watching it hit Naruto, but to his shock, it does absolutely nothing to Naruto, it just leaves a little bear mark in his clothes. Naruto just ate the Jidori of his body, his body's too strong for it. And seeing this, he says, Kakashi, I'm not pissed off because it's me, but if that was anyone else, you could have killed them. Learn your lesson. He Boots the ground and then he's flying into the air, knocking Kakashi out, kicking his chin. Passing the bell down. Naruto and his squad didn't need to do anything over the top for their pet, for their missions, as there were two Jonians on the team. Yes, it got the rule that Naruto's a Jonian. Sasuke goes, no fair. Sasuke gets, yes, that's Naruto, I know. They get immediately given a sea rank mission to escort a bridge builder to the land of waves. When this bridge builder Tazuna walks in, he's drunk, he gets the this is this god that missed to escort me. Pitiful. I just am so bored of this. But Naruto ends up glaring this man down, and Tazuna feels it in his chest. This pressure. This isn't a normal kid, and he immediately shuts up. 
As they walked into the village, Naruto notices the puddle and with Sage Rogue can sense the energy in it, but he ignores it. And when the demon brothers finally jump out saying, ah, we put you by surprise and nothing you can do now, Naruto just puts his hands up saying, Almighty push. This completely, completely obliterates these two demon brothers, mangling their limbs and then them flying away, nearly killing them, but not enough. And Kakashi sends for a, a not backup for like a cleanup squad from the leaf village to come get their bodies. But as this happens, some of a weird sword comes flying in and Kakashi says, Duck! Everyone else ducks but Naruto and instead using a partly KCM1 sends a Kurama arm and catches the sword, bringing it down to his side. Sabasa lands next to him saying, Impressive. You are the f one of the first ninjas to be able to catch my sword. You are worthy of to fight me. I am the demon of... I'm the demon of the mist. I'm Zabaza. I'm one of the legendary ninja swordsmen. Anyone who tried to fight. Before Zabaza can get over his speech, Naruto has appeared next to him from the right hook, spinning Zabaza's jaw, making him feel dizzy, sending him flying away. And Naruto jumps down and begins walking towards Kakashi. I mean, walking towards Zabaza. But Kakashi grabs his arm and says, "No, let me show you how a real, how a seasoned Jonin does things." After about five minutes of fighting Zabaza, he ends up getting caught in a water prison jutsu. Due to mainly Haku throwing Senbron from the side, slicing at Kakashi's arm, meaning that Kakashi wins for a second. Zabasa begins laughing, saying how they were good at first, but now they are nothing but their sensei. They might as well give their heads down, they might as well slit their own throats now and let their head draw. While he's laughing, Naruto just speaks very calmly and says, Almighty Paul. This yanks Haku out of the trees and Kakashi towards him. He grabs Kakashi and puts him down softly, and he's still holding K Haku by the throat. And he says, very, very calmly, with no emotion, Surrender, or I'll kill your ally. Sabato says, you're bluffing. You're a kid, what do you what do you know about killing someone? Naruto begins, not smirking, but his face changes from a calm face to a confident face. His grip begins to tighten, and, Zabuza, and Haku begins choking on air, going, Zabuza. Zabuza, Naruto remains uncalmed and phased by this and ends up tying in his grip. Zabuza yells on the stop and the earth dragon, but Naruto smiles and an earth dragon shoots up the ground without Naruto doing anything, digging into Zabuza's stomach, lifting him into the ground, and in the air, and a seemingly fist made out of pure air slams Zabuza back into the ground. Naruto looks at this and thinks, oh, I can't ever be entertained longer than two minutes, can I? He lets go of Haku, booted him towards Zabuza, and Sasuke thinks, this is my chance, and he runs in towards Haku and Zabuza on the ground, thinking, this is my chance to prove to Sasuke, this is my chance to prove to Naruto that I'm useful, that I'm doing my training. But, Haku immediately manages to get Sasuke in an ice prison jutsu, and before Naruto or anyone can react, he's immediately bombarded with Senbon, piercing every single part of his body. For the first time in years, well no, for the first time in all his life that he can remember at least, Naruto is overwhelmed by rage, hatred, as his best friend has just been, what Naruto thinks is killed. The ground beneath him begins to shake as power leaks out from Naruto's body. His true power begins to leak. The, and when I mean the ground shake, I mean all over the world it is shaking. The ice prison shatters and a weird white chakra seeps from Naruto's body. This is him and Naruto. This is his. Um, this is Naruto's chakra and Kuroma's chakra, perfectly linking for the first time, and it covers Sasuke, healing all his injuries. And as a matter of fact, Sasuke awakens his Sharingan, immediately becoming a through Tomoe. But the red color of the Sharingan is stained white by this Naruto's chakra, and Sasuke wakes up for a second and falls back unconscious. Zabuza. Is frozen in place, but he begins laughing, not realizing that Sasuke is alive. Begins laughing, saying, "You thought you was a top dog. Now look at your teammate dead. You couldn't do nothing about it. Now surrender your life, or you will be next. You can never stand against someone like me, a legendary ninja swordsman. You are nothing." Before, even though he was frozen in place, he was still giving verbal. And Naruto appeared in front of him, with rage still boiling over him. From him, his nose became claws, and he places them on Zabuza's throat. And he rips it, and he rips out Zabuza's throat, and he begins walking towards Haku, grabbing him up by his headband and holding him by his hair. 
no, uh, he actually grips onto his head and begins to slowly yank him. He tears up, he tears Haku's head from his shoulders, decapitating him, and blood sprays everywhere. Sakura so watching this throws up and gains a new fear called Naruto. Akakashi is sand and is sand and but also impressed by Naruto's readiness to kill and is also proud of the lengths that Naruto will go to to protect his friend. After this, the bridge has managed to be built, and in memory of what Naruto did to them, it is named the Bridge of Naruto Uzumaki. And Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi, and Sakura end their mission and begin to head back to the Leaf Village. We now go to Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura. They're walking back from the Land of Waves. Naruto is really happy saying they named the bridge after me, they named the bridge after me. But they finally arrive back in the village. And after being dismissed, Naruto immediately returns back to his house. He runs home. And when he opens the door, Daraya is sitting there with a bowl of hot ramen for the both of them. <clears throat> Naruto sits down with a smile and begins to tell Daraya about his mission, especially the part where he was shocked at how one of the legendary seven ninja swordsmen was weak and born to fight. Naruto here, uh, Jirai hearing this says, well, if he was weak then, I guess uh, you don't want me to teach you this new move or this new ability. Hearing this, Naruto's eyes immediately widen and light up, saying, no, 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 you can, st you can still teach me. And Jirai begins to laugh. He says, it's about time that we actually helped you learn about, or I actually helped you learn about your sage mode and how to use it. So roughly about two days go past. Naruto actually learns how to use his sage mode and to dry a surprise, I mean a big surprise, Naruto mastered it easily. And for those asking, if it's a godly Naruto, his sage mode is literally called God Sage Mode. His base abilities include literally unlimited infinity healing for him or other people. He's able to multiply his strength as much as he wants, but he drains his chakra. And he he can also drain his opponent his opponent's stamina and make it his own. Just by looking at them. After training this, Jiraiya tells Naruto he's proud of him, as this is a very, very big accomplishment for any ninja. But now, a few days later, Kakashi calls the team for a meeting and tells them that he volunteered them from the tune in his arms. And hearing this, Naruto's heart begins to race and he gets so excited and begins to train straight away, but in private. Taking a few lessons that he learnt from Jiraiya, wanting to do it on his own this time, Naruto tries to attempt the summoning jutsu, but what he summons surprises himself. It seems to be a dragon made out of like a space, like galaxy, like, you know when you look at upload images of the galaxy and you just see that beautiful stars everywhere, colours, that's what this dragon is made up of. But it has no clue of what its purpose is, and instead looks at Naruto and attacks. Naruto, unfazed by this at first, then attempts to swing and punch it until he feels this Dragon actually hurt his own fist. He gets thrown backwards. Naruto attempts to pick it up and body slam it, but it's heavy. It's heavy like a black hole. And Naruto begins to panic. Damn it, I can't let this go on the village. That's when he decides to test out his sage mode. He begins to amplify his strength insanely to 100, if not thousands, to millions. And he swings at full force, punching his dragon round the face. It slams it to the ground, but it gets up with no damage. And instead replies, Master. This dragon was testing Naruto to be a, see if it was strong enough to be his master. This dragon has no clue who it is, what it is, but it understands now that its only purpose is to serve Naruto. Naruto says to him, hmm, I can't exactly have a dragon summon him without getting attention. C can you change shape to like being a human? And the dragon, quiet for a second, looks at Naruto up and down and begins to change its shape to, to possess human features like arms, legs and all that, but it possesses no face. Naruto thinks of a name and names it Kanji. If you're wondering why, uh, that's the Japanese name I think for space, I guessed it, or I looked it up, I actually don't know. One second, I'll tell you guys right now. Oh no, it's... No, it's the Japanese, it's the Chinese name, sorry, for Milky Way. I looked it up for a good name, but anyway. After this happens, this dragon enters some liquid form and it shoots at Naruto. Up his hand, up his arm, and then 
onto his neck. It begins to begin to spin and form a small tattoo circle on Naruto's neck, similar to sort of dragon looking. Like you know Meliodas, Meliodas tattoo is that exactly like that, but on his neck. Naruto feels an insane power course through his veins. This is the power of the galaxy. But Naruto doesn't know this right now. And instead, <clears throat> Naruto just thinks, huh, I don't, I'll think about this later. But by the way, if you're wondering, the title of Naruto's next is literally just a normal black colour. We now go a little two day time to forget again for the tune in its arms to begin. Naruto goes in and he aces the written test. And before he gives in his sheet, he sits there in controlling the fire nature. In front of Sasuke and Sakura, Naruto makes the answers appear in small little flames. <clears throat> One sec, guys. Seeing this, both Sakura and Sasuke smile, and they both write down the answers. But out of respect for the only reason they're part and is Naruto, they let him hand his paper in first. After this, the first of death arc begins. After getting the rules explained to them, they all walk into the first of death, and Naruto not really being bothered by this, creates a shadow clone, and in a matter of seconds it comes back with the necessary score they needed. Naruto pauses for a second, with his sage mode always active, he senses that there's a massive snake, and he thinks, ugh, oh, if that hurts a student it'll be a problem, and he goes to deal with it, as it could be an actual danger to the other students. But this is where a weird person appears in front of Sasuke and Sakura, we know this to be a Orochimaru, and he attempts to tell them, give me your scroll, as a diversion. But when they refuse, he smiles, and using his blood just, blood loss Slaskin Jutsu, I don't actually know what it is guys, what he did in the show. Sasuke and Sakura both freeze up, unable to move, but Sasuke without even realising it was a reflex mostly, he activates his newly unlocked white Sharingan. And surprisingly, it reflects anything that all the stuff that was happening to him, like the Genjutsu was saying, back into Orochimaru. Orochimaru now is frozen up and can't move. But he he's about to undo this, but Naruto, who has now dealt with this massive snake, has just arrived back at this location. And seeing the mysterious person doesn't take the doesn't miss the chance to come in with a flying kick and kick Orochimaru in the face, sending him flying, but also tearing off the fake skin, revealing his true face. Naruto automatically recognises who this person is from a picture that he saw of Jiraiya's old team when they were younger. And he immediately yells, Orochimaru, leave this village now. I'll only spare your life this time out of respect for my, old sen uh, for my sensei and my father. But if you do not heed my warning, I will end your life here. Orochimaru laughs, saying, you, a mere child, is supposed to end me. Don't make me laugh. Naruto activates his running gun, which shakes Orochimaru to his core. As he gets flashbacks of when in the, he was in the Akatsuki, he attempted as a, mostly a test of Pain's abilities to steal his running gun, and Pain beat the shit out of Orochimaru like he beat his ass. Orochimaru comes to his senses thinking, wait a minute, it's only a mere child, a mere brat. It's impossible for him to have mastered the abilities of the running gun like he, Pain had before. And now, I'll have an Uchiha's body with the Renegon eyes. He lunged at Naruto, ready to snatch his eyes, only to get blown away by the almighty push. Before Orochimaru can recover, Naruto's on top of him. After pummeling him into the ground with a few punches, Naruto uses the Renegon's ability and begins to attempt to rip out Orochimaru's soul, damaging it. Orochimaru, in a last ditch effort, summons up uh, in a last uh, in a last ditch effort to escape summons up one million snakes and it begins to fall down from the sky Naruto's not phased by this as these snakes ain't gonna do shit to him but then he realizes wait Sakura as Sakura is pet some reason petrified of these snakes and she's long to go and scream and not even attempting to defend herself about to be bitten Naruto releases Orochimaru and his soul and the soul returns to Orochimaru's body but it's damaged meaning he's very weakened and he flies over to Sas uh, Sakura. As Sasuke is completely fine. He's nearly got rid of at least a thousand, two thousand snakes. And he pulls his hand to his side and yells, Masura Sengon, completely obliterating all the snakes. But then turns back to see that Orochimaru is gone. He takes a deep breath and exhales, relaxing, thinking it's over. 
until his common sense sets in, and that Orochimaru couldn't escape that quickly, especially with how damaged the assault was. That's when it happens, Orochimaru who had transformed into a leaf to hide, appears next to Sasuke, biting his neck, placing a curse mark. As Naruto sees Sasuke's body drop to the floor, lifeless body may I add, he thinks Sasuke's dead. Time slows for Naruto until it completely stops. Rage begins to overflow Nar inside Naruto, to the point his eyes roll back in his skull. And the dragon mark on his neck begins to spread down his arm and over his eye, similar to how the karma works. And its dark tattoo colour quickly disappears and becomes galaxy, identical to the colour that Naruto's dragon was. And the Renegon eye quickly disappears, well the part where the, I'm not going to call it, the part where the galaxy tattoo covers his eye, that Renegon eye disappears and becomes just pure galaxy. As if you were to look into outer space, that's what you'd see in Naruto's eyes. Time has now resumed, and plow, power explodes from Naruto, and I mean it explodes. Hundreds and hundreds of trees are just getting blown away, completely obliterated. And this pure actual force coming from Naruto means that both of Orochimaru's arms disintegrate. Naruto, who is still enraged, stares into Orochimaru's soul, and Orochimaru, who is frozen in fear, attempts to run away, but Naruto raises his hand up towards Orochimaru, and in a very, very dark, dark voice says, Die! As pure galaxy shoots out of Naruto's hands, towards Orochimaru, completely obliterating Orochimaru's bar, like, it completely gets melted, destroyed, killing him instantaneously. The marks on Naruto's body recede, returning back to the dragon tattoo on his neck, and he passes out. Naruto wakes up in hospital, with Jiraiya sitting there next to him waiting for him to wake up. Naruto wakes up a bit dizzy, but it quickly fades, and he looks around saying, oh, what happened? Jiraiya says, you killed Orochimaru, I'm impressed, but it's no time for jokes. What was that power? Naruto replies honestly, saying, I don't know, he hasn't made the connection between it being... What did I name the dragon? One second guys, I am sorry. Uh, kanji. He says, he doesn't. He hasn't made that connection of it being Kanji. And he just says, I, I don't know. Jiraiya says, well, wait, until we figure out that, what that power is, I suggest that you don't take part in the training design. We don't know who you could hurt. But Naruto argues back until Jirai realises he ain't going to win this argument. And after a, about 20 minutes, I mean 20 minutes of pure argument, he says, fine, but you have to promise me, if you if you feel this power going out of control or actually rising up again, not even going out of control, if you feel this power awakening again, promise me that you will give up, you will surrender in the tuning exams. And Naruto says, fine, I promise. But he decides that he isn't going to ask Jiraiya for help. He wants This is something that he needs to figure out on his own. That he wants to figure out on his own and that he will. We now have a two day time strip. Naruto is fully healed up of course. And the tuning designs begin. We first go to Kiba versus Naruto. And before the fight even properly begins, get, begins getting going. Naruto releases some of his chakra. And this chakra had, had been infused with Naruto's new galaxy power and Kiba passes out from the pure pressure. For some reason Naruto is able to do this and he just finds it natural as if he's been able to do it his whole life. Neji versus Hinata goes the same as it did in canon but before the final blow can be landed where it caused real real damage Naruto appears in front of Neji saying piss off you know you've already run stop trying to take a life that is unnecessary you're just a bully mate. Neji screams at him, how dare you interrupt my destiny, and he swings at Naruto. Naruto opens his eyes a bit wider than they already were, ready to activate his Renegon to use almighty push. But before he has the chance to, Neji's fist comes into contact with some sort of barrier around Naruto that even Naruto wasn't aware of and is confused of, and Neji gets sent back flying. And when the smoke clears of Neji slamming into the wall, it reveals that Neji's arm was broken and mangled as bones were sticking out in many areas and Neji was screaming in agony. The referee steps in saying Naruto Uzumaki is disqualified and they, as even if they use their top healers on his arm, one sec guys, 
and even because even if they used their top healers on his arm, it would take hours to heal, and it would leave lasting damage for a week minimum. However, Naruto just spits on the ground saying, oh, you're making me do all the work, and walks over to Neji, placing his fingers on his arm. <clears throat> placing his finger on Neji's arm. Using his Sage Mode ability of infinite healing, he heals Neji's arm instantly, shocking everyone as the referee asks Neji. Oh, one sec. Pepsi match, right there. <coughs> oh. He asks Neji, can you continue? Is there any outlasting damage? But ne Neji says, I'm fine, I can continue. And referee announces that Naruto Uzumaki may continue with the tune in his arms. Naruto vs Neji begins, but Neji is very wary to attack Naruto and instead attempt to give his speech from afar, but Naruto ain't having that block wrench yet. And he uses Almighty Pool to drag Neji towards him and grabbing him by his neck. He begins he was beginning to get ready to choke slam him, but before Naruto can even do anything, Neji begins to have a panic attack, having flashbacks to what happened to his arm of the fear he felt looking at Naruto and surrenders. Lee vs Gara is then announced, and this goes exactly the same as in canon, but instead, Naruto yet again has to interrupt another fight before any major damage is done, as he could see that Lee's legs were going to get destroyed. But now they're, but the referee steps in, and now there's an issue, as due to neither Lee or Gara being knocked out, who would win? Who's been announced as a winner? And the referee then like, says, blah blah blah, Naruto Uzumaki shall be disqualified and one of these fighters will take his place. Due to him interrupting again, Naruto says, Piss off, mate. You are not to disqualify me for doing your job for you. You know for a fact he would have got fucked up. Lee then says, No, don't disqualify him. Instead, if Nar he says to Naruto, if, if you can beat me, I will admit it is my loss and I will surrender. Naruto smiles and says, I respect it. And their fight begins. To get ready for the fight, Lee immediately goes straight into the third game and begins explaining what the eight gates are to Naruto. But Naruto interrupts him, saying, Wait a minute, I can do that. And immediately goes into the seventh gate and laughing, saying, I had no clue this was the eight gates. I just thought like it was a bit of like chakra. I thought it was the Kyle Can. I know he didn't say that, guys, but I can't think of any excuse. Lee dumbfounded but also known he ain't gonna win this says I, I'm sorry I accept the defeat and there's no way I can beat you I'm just happy that if that's true that you didn't know what it was I'm happy you didn't open that eighth gate the final gate accidentally Naruto curious about this says what this and opens the gate of death as the red aura seeks out from his skin everyone is scared Kakashi Guy everyone's ed person there the third Akagi Jiraiya as medical experts, the top ones rush in to the arena, hoping they can save Naruto. As he hasn't even been in the 8th gate for long, there's a chance they could save him. But Naruto deactivates the 8th gate completely fine, saying, I've been always been able to do this, I don't really get any damage. Guy, Guy's entire world has just crumbled. How can he, how, how can he use the 8th gates without trouble? What is this bullshit? But Naruto just laughs and says, I guess that is what it is. Now we go to Sasuke versus Gara happen, happening, and Sasuke activates his right shir white Sharon gun. He has been training this, and he's figured out the abilities. Gara launches sand spikes at him, and Sasuke just stands there, not paying attention. He opens his eyes wider, and the sand spikes get reflected right back at Gara. This is Sasuke's new ability. Yeah, I mean his new Sharon gun's ability. Due to Naruto infusing his chakra into it. Sasuke's ability is that he, he's similar to Meliodas's full counter. Sasuke can reflect any ninjutsu going any ninjutsu at all to the one who shot it by just looking at it. Due to this, this fight goes insanely easy, and the same thing that happens, he gets hit with a Jodori. Gara ends up going berserk, and it sends Sasuke flying away from him. But Sakura doesn't get caught up in this, and instead, Gara attempts to flee the village. He begins running out, but Naruto follows him. And in stops him saying, Stop running, you pussy. Gara turns around, Hey, you want to die? But Naruto is not phased. And instead, he begins just fighting against Gara quite easily. He's even bored. But he out respect for Gara, he's still fighting with a, without trying to make it obvious. 
but eventually even Naruto gets too bored and becomes lazy. And Gara's using Shugaku's chakra enters that other form where he's more like Shugaku and he gets like a hundred times faster. I know that's a stretch, but so what? This actually catches Naruto off guard. I remember, keep in mind, he has no like kick again get activated. And this actually caught Naruto guard and he's about to be hit, even though it would do no damage. Until that mysterious barrier appears again and half of Gara slash Shugaku's body is blown away. This causes Gara to pass out and Shugaku is fully released. And as Naruto's seen this, he begins thinking of ways he can end this without causing any major damage to the leaf village. And as Shugaku's roaring, he's sending air blasts at Naruto, and Naruto's dodging, weaving, and all of that. But that's when Shugaku, Naruto senses Shugaku's chakra. It's immense. He's not afraid, but it then begin to happen. That's, he feels a tattoo on his neck, begin to try to go down to his body. The power is trying to release. It's trying to escape. It's trying to transform. Similar to Sasuke's curse mark, this power is trying to release itself, but Naruto is fighting his very best to hold it back, tries to contain it. Naruto then realises, wait, wait a minute, am I afraid of this power? After a bit of struggling against his power for a few minutes, Shugaku is confused watching it as he could sense this power, he's just been there sitting quietly watching. Naruto then has the revelation, the realisation, all his life, not once had he, be, had he been afraid of his power, even though it was immense. Instead, he embraced it. He was proud of it. Why would this new power be any different? And Naruto stops holding it back. Stops holding back. Stops hold. I mean, stops holding it back. Stop trying to contain it. And he just smiles, saying, "I'm just gonna embrace it." As the dragon tattoo spreads along his body, over his eye, and becomes galaxy, his eye enters that galaxy mode. And Shugaku, although wary of his power, are ready for it. Has no time to react before Naruto appears next to him, and as Naruto effortlessly waves his arm upwards, literally tearing Shugaku's arm off his shoulders, and as long with as long along with Shugaku's tail, and then lifts up his arm that's covered in galaxy and actually absorbs Shugaku's body into his into himself. I'm gonna, that's gonna work for plot later. Don't worry. Shugaku, seeing that he has no match for Naruto, begins to try to flee, run away. But Naruto opens his palm and points his, ha his hand directly at Shugaku and lifts it in the air. Shugaku, although it, as, although it was telekinesis, anti-gravity, whatever you could think, is then lifted into the air. He's trying to break out of this, trying to still get away. And Naruto slowly begins to close his hands, making a fist very slowly. The more Naruto's hand closes, Little cracks of universe of galaxy appear over Shugaku's body, as a white as a light starts pouring out of it, as if there was an energy inside Shugaku being created and making him explode from inside out. And in reality, that is what happening as Naruto makes the full fist. Shugaku explodes into tight from the inside out and becomes tiny bits of a dead star as it falls down, glowing, glistening. It's gorgeous, and Naruto sees. Gara's body falling down to the ground. He jumps and catches him, and he's confused. The right in Gara's head, it's the same sort of galaxy that Naruto has, but it quickly returns back to the redna, red colour, and he thinks, hmm, that's going to be interesting in the future. But Gara manages to wake up slightly, and he just sees Naruto, he just sees Naruto's bright smile looking at him, saying, you're all right now. And Naruto lands. We now go to Naruto and Gaara, who are sitting in the middle of a crater, created by the battle between Naruto and Shugaku. Gaara wakes up and begins to cry, saying, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to, I couldn't control it, I couldn't hold it back anymore, the voices became too loud. Naruto begins to laugh, shocking Gaara, Naruto's laugh very quickly becomes infectious, and Gaara begins to laugh with him. Gaara, after about a minute of laughing, like literally just a one minute of pure laughter. Gara finally manages to ask Naruto, why are you laughing? Which Naruto replies, why not? You're apologising for something that isn't even your fault, as if you meant to do all the things you did. I just find it funny. Gara smiles and said, I never thought of it that way. My entire life I was shunned, hated for something that was out of my control. I guess after all them years, I began to believe it was actually my fault as well. But no, you're right. It wasn't my fault. And it never will be. But for some reason, the voices the voices have gone quiet. 
Narrator replies, that's because I fixed your little problem and got rid of that one-tailed bastard. You won't ever hear the voices again. The begins to tit the kit ugh. the tears begin to flow even harder as Gara says thank you from the bottom of my heart, I promise that no matter what happens, I will repay this debt in full. Naruto replies, There's no debt to be paid now that we're friends, right? And sorry guys, my mum my sittings. Sorry, 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 sorry. Gar Gara says quietly in a voice to himself. Friends are. I've never had a friend, but no, I insist. I must pay back this debt. Naruto thinks for a moment and then replies, If you really want to pay your debt back that much, why not join this village and stay with me? Because life can get really, really boring here. Gara immediately agrees, but questions, Wait, how will we be allowed after all that, he has, that, after all that I've done? And Naruto smokes, Say, don't worry, let me handle it. We now cut to Naruto in the third Akage's office, arguing with the third Akage to let Gara stay in the Leaf Village. The third Akage says no, he's caused way too much damage and injured our, and, and injured our shinobi. Naruto says bullshit. No one got injured because I dealt with him before any of your precious Ambu were even in a mile radius, so don't give me that shit about people got injured. The third Akage says no, I won't have a reason good enough for you people to accept it. Naruto stops for a moment and thinks. And then says, what if the reason is that the reward I asked for for saving the leaf village from a one tailed rampage was that I wanted Gara to stay in the leaf village. The third Okage still refuses this. Naruto takes a deep breath saying then you leave me no choice. I, Naruto Uzumaki, am leaving the leaf village along with Gara to start our own village. After hearing this, the third Okage shouts, wait! As Naruto is facing the door, not showing his face at all because he has the biggest mischievous smile on his face. The third Okage says, well, if that's the case, I guess, no, I mean, we can 100% welcome Gar with open arms into our village, as long as you don't leave. Naruto is saying thank you, I knew you'd understand. If you're wondering why this happened, as the third Okage recognises Gar, I mean, recognises Naruto as being one of the strongest forces that their village has, and you know what? My mum got some Irish orange juice, yeah, from a special Irish shop near us. It's an hour drive. It's called Club Orange. It's the best drink I've ever had. And it's the best drink. It's my favourite drink ever. Listen. Oh. It's the best. <clears throat> After giving Gar the good news, they both head to his house where Dry is sitting there yet again, but waiting for him. But this time he has three bowls of ramen. And says, the whole Kage already informed me what you did, you cheeky brat, threatened to leave the Lee village if he doesn't let your friend join. Hearing this guy is shocked and felt a bit guilty, saying, you what? You shouldn't have done that. You, you could have lost your home and all that. Naruto says, with a sm smile, it's no biggie. I would do anything for my friends and you are my friend. Hearing this, both Jiraiya and Gara smile. W one of them is happy to have such a great friend, while the other one is happy his son is such a great person. Yeah, so those who didn't pay attention in part 1, Naruto is Jiraiya's son, he adopted him. Now Naruto has a week of free time, as Jiraiya decided that he needed to train Jar Gara and figure out his abilities before they're given a rank, he was also asked to do this by the third Okage. So Naruto goes deep, deep into the forest of death, and summons Kanji, if you forgot, that is his galaxy dragon summoning. He summons Kanji as he finally made the link between his new power, that galaxy transformation, and and he linked it that it has something to do with her and he asks her, what is it? Kanji replies, it is my duty to protect my master. As such, when I wasn't sure if you would be injured or not, I decided to protect you. Naruto goes, so that's what that barrier was in the tune in its arms. And when Chugaku attacked me. Interesting, but that's not the main point. What is that other form I have now? Where the tattoo mark spreads down my body and over my eye. Kanji replies, you're my master, so obviously what mine is then yours. So that form is when you channel my power. Naruto now understanding what it is. Oh, one second guys, I'm my phone is ringing. Sorry about that, it was my mate asking what we're doing in the off term. But anyway, where was I, where was I? Anyways, and Kanji says that's you just channeling my power. Now that Naruto understands it, he asks, where else can I do with this power? Kanji replies, it would be better if you figured it out on your own. But I'll give you two important ones at least, because mainly one of them you already did it and haven't even realised. 
and that is you can choose who to bless with the power of the galaxy. Although it will be nowhere near as powerful as you are, or how you will become with using the power of the galaxy yourself, it would still be insanely powerful when compared to the average of shinobi in this world. Nardo thinks back and realises, wait is that why the mark on Gar's forehead became galaxy? And Kanji replies precisely Naruto, or precisely master. And Naruto then asks, what ability does that include? And Kanji replies, only time will tell. And now, for the second round ability, you're able to tear holes in space and travel through them like wormholes. After hearing this, Naruto smirks and Kanji returns into his returns into that liquid form and shoots up Naruto's arm, returning to his dragon tattoo. Actually, you know what, guys? The dragon tattoo. I was gonna make it when Kanji summoned his tattoo disappears, but no, that's not happening. He just returns straight back into the dragon tattoo. Naruto then has a very mischievous smile on his face again. And yells, if I got lucky with my first summon, then how lucky will I get with my second? And he attempts another summoning jutsu, and yet again is astounded by what's in front of him. It's another dragon, but it's made out of nothing but darkness. And when I mean darkness, this darkness is so dark that it's like the surrounding light has been sucked into it, bending reality. Naruto hears Kanji's voice saying, incredible, that's the void dragon, the only creature in existence who could rival my power, other than you of course, master. You're in luck, the only way to tame this creature is by using me to tame it, where you, where you tame me with your pure strength, he needs me to tame. Naruto thinks about it and says, nah, I'm gonna do it myself, and rushes at the Void Dragon and swings a punch, unlike when he fought against Kanji, where Kanji's head didn't even move, it felt like he hit a wall. This dragon actually seemed to be damaged at first, so Naruto realises it is unfazed, and he feels his trap for being to be drained. Naruto laughs and says, so that's how it is, <laughs> you wanna drain my tracker, then eat your fill. He jumps on the dragon's back and wraps around his neck and he brings the poor tracker into it. The void dragon at verse is unfazed until you hear a voice saying, No, no, no more, no, please, I surrender. This is the void, dra void dragon's voice and he bows as Naruto gets off him saying, Master. Kanji appears in a human form saying, Incredible, you filled the void dragon's inf infinite reservoir or infinite storage worth of chakra. Tra you ugh, restart. You filled the void dragon's infinite infinite storage or reserves at least. But that's impossible. It's infinite. That means you filled infinity with infinity. Or so more than that. Just how much chakra do you have, master? Now it doesn't apply to Kanji and says, "I will name you Kusho," and that is because the Japanese name of void. Is Kusho. Kusho is very similar to Kanji and becomes liquid form and shoots up Naruto's arm and goes onto the left side of his neck, for creating another tattoo. We now cut to two days later, where Sasuke, who is slowly becoming a bit different than who he used to be, he's more irritable, more snappy, and just more of a mug. That in the third Akage, he's in the third Akage's office along with Gara and Naruto. The third Akage announces that due to the tuning exams, Sasuke and Gaara have been promoted to tuning, while Naruto has been promoted to joining. Hearing this, Sasuke is spiteful and he cuts in, saying, No! I'm stronger than Naruto now! It should be me who's joining! Sus After Sasuke says this, Naruto laughs, saying, You're a long way from being stronger than me, Sasuke. Sasuke yells, Don't test me, Naruto. I'm not the same. I will win. Just out of curiosity, Naruto says, okay, then prove it. Sasuke laughs, saying, you go first, I don't want you to say it's unfair when you lose. Shoot your strongest dudes at me, Naruto. Naruto replies with, hmm, okay, and makes a Rasengan, which is nowhere near his strongest jutsu, or has barely put any chakra in it. And he shoots it at Sasuke, it's, I mean, it's strong enough to knock Sasuke out. And Sasuke smirks. He activates his white shrine gun and counters the Rasengan and it shoots back. Now with Sasuke's counter ability with training, not only does he counter any Junjutsu, he makes it two times stronger. And the Rasengan is sent back at Naruto twice as strong, but Naruto does stand there and tanks it, without being phased at all. And he replies, wow Sasuke, I'm impressed. It's still not strong enough to fight against me, so what if I can't use Ninjutsu? Naruto begins to release his Galaxy Presser, like he did against Kiba and it blows Sasuke into the wall and enforces him down onto one knee. As he could barely even look up, he says, What? What is this pressure? Scowling at Naruto. Naruto releases him, saying, with a smile, 
Just train a bit harder, Sasuke. Who knows? You might be doing this to me one day. Sasuke stands up quickly, but stays quiet this time. And the third Okage continues. My old age is getting to me, and I'm planning to step down. But before I do that, you three need to go and find my replacement, Tsunade, my old student. Naruto immediately says I refuse, but Sasuke and Gaara will go. It will give them a chance to get to know each other. Gaara happily agrees to this. Oh, one second, let me turn my notifications off. Gaara happily agrees to this as he's getting a chance to make new friends with Sasuke while Sasuke just nods and walks out. They leave the village in search for Tsunade and Naruto just spends the next week training his new abilities. It seems like this void dragon doesn't have the ability to spread along his body like the karma. Like, you know how I said the galaxy dragon mark, it spreads along the body like karma. The void one doesn't seem to have the ability to do this, or at least Naruto hasn't figured out how to. But, but the ability that Naruto could figure out is that he can completely erase someone's chakra for any period of time, making it void. As he realises this, he senses Gara and someone else's chakra that he doesn't recognise at the village gates, but he realises Gara is extremely weak, as if he was dying. And Naruto tears a hole in space and teleports to them, where he sees Gara and a blonde haired woman who he recognises immediately as Hunade, but they're extremely beaten up. That's when he sees it a hole in Gara's chest, and Naruto checking it with his running gun, it barely missed his heart. As a matter of fact, it actually destroyed a bit of it. Shinade drops to the floor along with Gara, saying, It was the other boy who was with us. Weird marks spread all over his body, and he went berserk and did this. Gara refused to fight against him, saying, we're friends, I will not fight. But in the end, he ended up like this, without even fighting back. I barely had enough chakra to get here, let alone heal him. Please, get him some help. He, he saved my life, he's the only reason I'm even alive. For the second time in Naruto's life, time has stopped. He can no long, longer sense Gara's chakra. Suddenly, time resumed as he sees the mark on Gara's forehead change from red to galaxy. As all of Gara's wounds immediately heal, Naruto is relieved and he goes over and heals Tsunade, and then immediately leaves at insane speeds towards Sasuke. As soon as, he, as soon as he picks up and can sense Sasuke's chakra, he tears open space and appears above Sasuke. He sees, the, he sees all the strange fight that Tsunade spoke of, but he's not phased at all. As Sasuke spots him, he can barely block in time as Naruto spins around and slams his fist into the arms, causing like you can literally hear the crack in Sasuke's arms breaking them. He slams into the ground leaving a crater, but before Sasuke can even recover, Naruto comes down screaming, WHY SASUKE? and he stamps on Sasuke's chest. Sasuke splits blood everywhere and says, DO BE STRONG. Naruto watches as the curse mark that was already on completely envelops Sasuke's body, as wings sprout out of his back and he kicks Naruto off him. Seeing this, Naruto realises what's going on, and he raises his arms to his side like a T-pose, and yells, Come at me, Sasuke. If you truly are ready, let's see what you can do. I've completely lowered my defences. Let's see if you really are determined to kill your best friend for power. Sasuke charges at Todori and runs directly at Naruto, and it tears through Naruto's chest and his heart. Naruto spits out blood over Sasuke's face, looking him dead in the eyes. It's as I thought, you really are not in control. We hear Kajun's voice, remember that's the galaxy dragon saying, Master, that was reckless even for you. You're lucky we are with you, as long as at least one of us are with you, even if your heart stops, you will not die. But here then is your own choice, but luckily for you, you have a great healing factor. It is at this moment Naruto yells, Now Kurama! As Red Chakra pours out Naruto's body, not like a one tails cloak, it's more controlled, pure, condensed. And it begins to surround Naruto's body like a cloak or a cape. And six tendrils appear on no eight tendrils appear on Naruto's back. We recognise this as barrier mode, and this is what he says to Sasuke. Sasuke, this is barrier mode. We now cut to a week back when Naruto, just before Naruto started training with uh I forgot his name, oops, with Kusho. I think I messed up the name, what we're gonna go with it anyway. We can now cut back to a week back. As Kurama and Naruto are talking about this form called Barium Mode as a last ditch resort so they know they need it, if they have it they need it. 
It uses Kuruma's life energy in exchange for power, as there would never be enough chakra to actually sustain the form. But after watching Naruto's fight with the Void Dragon and realizing that Naruto's chakra is infinite, Kuruma believes that Naruto's chakra would be enough to sustain and maintain the form. We now cut back to the fight. Naruto is now in barrier mode, and Sasuke is no lo longer able to hand land a single blow. And with his hand still in his chest, the tendrils slam into Sasuke, sending him flying across the valley, slamming him into a wall. The hole in his chest immediately heals, and the real fight begins. Not at all has a Sasuke cannot land a single blow, but every single punch that Naruto lands, it's like he absorbs a, this transformation. Every single place his punch lands, his skin returns to normal, he loses the transformation. And after about a minute, Naruto says, Okay, it's enough. Sasuke has returned to his normal form by now, and he says, It's time to go night night, Sasuke. I'll see you when you're back to normal, my friend. He then ducks beneath Sasuke, and he swings his entire body in motion as he kicks from the ground upwards, slamming it into Sasuke's face, knocking him out, and for safety measures, he erects his arm on the red chakra, and he slams it down. Well, I mean he slams it when Sasuke's body hits the ground. Remember, they're in the Valley of Death right now, or the Valley of the End, I mean. The ocean they were on gets split into a crate, and it falls back up. Naruto looks down at his unconscious friend. For the first time in his life, he fully feels despair, sadness, and void. He feels all these feelings in his chest as these emotions overrun him. Now to hear Kusho's voice. And it says, Finally, I was surprised when we first made the contract, when I first became your servant and you became my master. I realised that you never had once oh, experienced the actual villain or void, therefore unable to truly use my power. But now it is yours to command as you have fully experienced these emotions. As he says this, Naruto feels his void dragon on the left side of his body spread down his arm over his face and he sees in a reflection of the water, similar to how when he uses galaxy his eyes becomes a galaxy, his now is as black as a void. Naruto then places his left hand <clears throat> over Sasuke's curse mark and he begins to search and search for the negative emotions, the negative chakra and he says it's as, as I thought, where are Orochimaru being killed immediately? Without him, I don't think Orochimaru expected that, <laughs> he giggles. The negative emotion he had, the dark thoughts, the I mean, pure power he had, transferred to Sasuke's curse mark. Theoretically meaning, in reality he had no control over his actions, but now I will fix my mistake. He's, as he finally finds all the negative emotions, he begins to charge up his power, and Naruto's voice turns dark and deep, and he says, Void. He completely erases the dark emotions, the dark energies inside Sasuke, and he stands up and looks down at Sasuke. He's happy. His friend is saved. But he notices that Sasuke's curse mark isn't gone at all, but is now glowing, or should I say absorbing the light, as it is the same colour that the boy dragon is, that the same colour that his mark goes when he activates the boy dragon's power. Naruto smirks, saying, is this? Kusha interrupts saying, him, saying, yes it is. And it's just as you thought. Just as you can give people the powers of the galaxy, you can also give them the power of void. Naruto, still smiling, stands up and picks Sasuke, picks Sasuke up and puts him over his shoulder and makes his way back to the village. We now go to Naruto, who has just made it back to the village gate with an unconscious Sasuke on it. I know it sucks, but get over it guys. Sorry guys, I'm back and I am pissed. Yes, you could hear that my mic was not working properly and also I got through about 80% of this what if and it corrupted. Yeah, I'm pissed. Anyway, Naruto has an unconscious Sasuke on his shoulders and he's just roughly about made it back to the village gates. But when he gets there, he sees Skara still waiting in exactly the same spot he left. And he lands in front of Gara. Gara. Gara sees the hole in Naruto's shirt where Sasuke used to use the Chidori on him. And Gara panics, saying, "No, it happened to you too." 
Rage begins to boil up inside of Gara. And um, boil up inside of Gara. This rage is directed at Sasuke. As his sand begins to rise, ready to attack Sasuke, Naruto yells, Don't you dare, Gara! He was being controlled by Orochimaru, just like you was being controlled by Shugaku. It wasn't his fault. After hearing this, Gara immediately calms down, remembering Naruto's words. Why should, why should someone be blamed for something that wasn't their fault? A calm smile comes along Gara's face as he goes along with Sasuke to the hospital and I'm making sure this is actually recording and it is. We are getting results guys. Let's hope we don't corrupt this time. We now skip to two days where Sasuke is still unconscious and Gara and Naruto are still sitting next to his bed wait waiting for him to wake up. That's when Kusho says to Naruto, it's time, he's about to awake. The reason why Sasuke had been asleep for so long is that his body needed time to adapt to the power of the void that Naruto gifted him. Naruto then asks what abilities will he get and Kusha begins to reply saying N only Naruto then interrupts him saying only time will tell right and I'm so sorry guys I'm suffering from long covid and I'm always out of breath. Oh. After Naruto interrupts him, Kanji he said Kanji said the same thing about Gara when I asked. At this moment, Sasuke opens his eyes and sits up, rubbing his chin when Naruto kicked him in the jaw to knock him out. He smiles at Naruto until he remembers exactly what he had done, and he begins to break down in tears, holding his head down, yelling, "No, no, no!" Naruto immediately grabs him and saying, "Sasuke, it's okay. It wasn't your fault. Calm down." Sasuke says, still shaken, how could you possibly say that? After all I did, I tried to kill Gara, Tsunade, even you. Naruto says, it doesn't matter, you didn't kill them or me, and it's mostly my fault. I didn't realise that, I didn't realise that if I killed Orochimaru, that he had a link to you for that curse mark and he would try to take over. After hearing this, Sasuke calms down slightly, but Naruto continues, and also with Gara and Tsunade, I could tell you was fighting back for control as you missed their foul organ organs, although you could have easily hit them. However, it was different but with me because by then the curse mark had fully spread throughout your body, meaning you had zero control. Sasuke begins to claw out the curse mark, saying, It's still there. I, I want it gone. Naruto last saying, I've dealt with it, Sasuke, and now that's a way bigger benefit to you. So I'd just suggest you embrace it, as you have full control over it now. Suddenly, ten army members bust into the room, saying, Sasuke Ichiha, you are under arrest. Five of these army members are with, are with, oh, one second guys, restart the ting. Ten army members suddenly bust into the room, five, one of, in groups of, what is, what, one of them is a group of five and another is a group of five. One group says, Sasuke Uchiha, you are under arrest by the order of the 5th Hokage. And the other says, Sasuke Uchiha, you are under arrest by the order foundation by Lord Danzo. One attempts to grab Sasuke, and this is from the foundation, and Naruto volleys his foot into this army member's head. He then activates his Ranagon and says, anyone who wants him has to go through me, but be prepared, because I will kill anyone to protect my friends. The foundation whispers among themselves. As Naruto... As Naruto overhears him say, Naruto Uzumaki is also a target by Lord Danzo. He demands that we get his eyes as a top priority. They rush at Naruto, but Naruto gains claws and he rips out their throat. Well, one of their throats at least. This catches the rest of them off guard, but Naruto doesn't give a shit about the honour. He doesn't give a flying fuck about not attacking someone who isn't ready. And using the Renegon, he pulls out two of their souls. This gives him enough of the... This gives... Mm, sorry guys, I'm getting really fucking pissed off by just my stutter and speech dependent. Why can't I fucking talk properly? This gives him enough information he needs about the foundation. And he grabs the head of, and he grabs the, head of the other one and pops it like a grape. But before he could kill the final one, Danzo walks in and he says, Naruto Uzumaki, you have been ordered by the third... By the... Fifth Hokage to surrender. N Once lent eyes and Danzo, Naruto can no longer suppress his rage, as both his eyes change colour, one becoming galaxy and the other becoming void, even though his tattoos didn't spread. Naruto did not at all activate this, it just happened. Naruto looks at the last foundation member and he explodes. 
Dando stumbles backwards, terrified by this power, and he stutters. How, how, how dare you? Lady Shonade ordered you to surrender. How dare you refuse her, you monster? It's at this time that we hear Tsunade's voice from behind Danzo, saying, I don't remember making such an order. Danzo turns pole as he turns around to see Tsunade staring at him, piss. He turns as white as snow, and Tsunade takes a deep breath and he says, Danzo, you can leave. But he, as Danzo attempts to do so, Gara wraps his hand around his leg saying, No, I heard what you were thinking. You're just going to try to steal Naruto and Sasuke's eyes like you did to the rest of the Ajiha clan. Your arm is covered in them. After he says this, Naruto turns to Gara confused until he sees the mark on Gara's forehead has become Galaxy. He smirks and as he realises that Gara's, one of Gara's abilities is that he can read the minds of others. And he yells, if you say so Gara, I believe you. As Naruto uses Almighty Paul and one of the army members blade and grabs it and stabs Danzo through the chest. As Tsunade yells, no! The five other Anbu who were there, like for Tsunade, thinking Tsunade needed their help, rushed at Naruto, but Sasuke appears in front of them instantly, putting three of them in with a Genjutsu, and with ease knocking the other two out. Naruto smirks, making a comment to himself under his breath. The power of the void has already taken effect. Tsunade then yells, Naruto, what have you done? Naruto just yells, shut up you old hag and watch, as he rips out the blade that's covering Danzo's, uh, I mean that's inside Ganjo's chest. He also rips off the covering on Danzo's other arm, revealing it to be covered in Sharingans. As one of the eyes closed, Danzo's eyes open back up again as his injury is healed. He looks up that his hidden arm has been released. He then attempts to jump out of the window to make an escape. But now to his eyes are now back, like he's deactivated his running gun, he grabs his ankle and slams him down into the ground and says, where do you think you're going, my friend? So guys, yet again, my content has been fucked up by annoying shit like a corrupting audio or my mic fucking unplugging. It's bare annoying. And for those who don't know, because I'm reading these comments and I'm getting fucking pissed off, you know. I'm putting all this effort into this content, yeah, and you're still fucking trying to nitpick a little shit. For those who don't know, I have a speech impediment, and if you don't know what that is, have a look it up or I'll explain it now. It means I can't pronounce certain words properly, sometimes I stutter, and it happens randomly, I can't really control it. So for them little fuckers in the comedy want to nitpick it, you can go fuck yourself, mate. Go suck your mums, go suck your mum, go suck your dad, whatever you can suck, I want you to suck it. But yeah, other than that guys, I'm going to try to get back into this. I, I'll try to watch my mic to make sure it doesn't corrupt and all that. But no promises can be made. But yeah, anyway, let me get back to where I was. Danzo looks over to see Sasuke. It unplugged again! But okay, it should be back to normal now. <sighs> Danzo looks to his right to see Sasuke standing there with the void curse mark spread throughout his body. And his white shroud getting activated. Tsunade begins to panic. No, it's, it's the same mark as back then. He's gonna, he's gonna kill us all. But no, the mark is, is darker. Naruto says it's fine, relax. I changed it, no ma no lo it no longer corrupts his mind. I got rid of that bastard Orochimaru's control. Now that mark just gives him insane power. But before Dante can even react, in a blur, Sasuke has appeared in front of him and plunged a Todori into his chest. As this void curse mark begins to glow with power, all the shrugs on the long dancer's arms begin, begin to turn black, close, and die. And this is because the void's power is to erase chakra for now, and all the chakra inside these shrugs have been erased. Dancer begins to scream at them to help him. Don't just stand there, help! And he looks at Sonades. You f what the fuck are you doing, woman? Help me! And Sonades spits in his face before he looks at Naruto and says, Please, boy, help me, I'm innocent. I can even tell you about your parents. Before you can get another word out, Naruto has literally reached out and slammed his hand into Danzo's eye socket, ripping out his other hidden eye. Revealing to Pierre Sharangan, Naruto is disgusted, stares at him and says, How are you innocent? You know what, if you can explain where the fuck you got all them Sharangans on your arm, I will help you. But until then, this eye doesn't belong to you. After this, Sasuke dies and... I mean, after this dance, guys, but Sasuke begins to cry, saying, I, I can see everything. 
I can see my clan be murdered. I can see what he did to Atachi, to Shishui. It's like I can see all his memories. Naruto then realises this is probably due to one of Sasuke's void abilities most likely being being able to see the memories of whoever he kills. And it's at that time Sasuke, Naruto notices Sasuke's Sharingan pattern has changed into the infinite Magenko Sharingan. This is because after seeing the memories of his clan being wiped out, his brother and Shishui dying, well not dying, Shishui dying at least. Oh. It triggered the Magenko Sharingan to activate it. And the power of the void turned into an internal Magenko Sharingan. For those who don't know, I don't know if I said it already, but I'm suffering from, from long COVID and it's fucking me up bad. And right now, I feel my heart beating out my chest. And I can barely breathe. <coughs> I'm a Oh. Oh. Sasuke looks up and he says, Hi, it's Shishui's. Naruto then hands it to Naruto. Uh, Naruto then hands it to Sasuke, saying, It's your clan's eyes. You do what you want with it. Sasuke then looks at the eye and then looks at Gara. And he gives it to Gara, saying, This is not only a symbol of an apology, but as a symbol as our friendship. At this point, Tsunade has ordered Sasuke, Naruto, and Gara to go to her office. Naruto refers her that Arochimaru used the curse mark to control Sasuke before Naruto managed to erase it, like the evil intent. After hearing this, Tsunade thinks and she says, okay, you are excused of your crime, but for a chance for this to all blow over, you will have to leave the village for three years with Jiraiya. You can do whatever you like, whether that's train or just go on a holiday. I will tell the elders it's a serious mission. <laughs> After hearing this, they all agree and go back home to pack their stuff. Jiraiya is helping Naruto pack and they begin to talk. Jiraiya asks, what's the plan from here on? Naruto replies, I have a gut feeling that something big is coming. And whether this is something good for us or bad, we need to train for, for the next two years as, our life, it's our, as if our life depends on it, because there's a chance it probably could. Now we go to a training arc and a three year time skip. I'm not going to give you a whole arc of training, I'm just going to tell you the abilities they unlock. For Gara, he implants Shishu's eye into him and learns how to use it. But due to his galaxy power, he can span Koto Matasuke army, or whatever Shishuri's Genjutsu is. And one second guys, I am fuming. And when, and also, when he uses his galaxy mode, the Sharangan gains the galaxy pattern, as well as giving him the ability to read on a person's entire memory at a glance. He then masters the, his galaxy power and its abilities, such as Star Sands, make which is literally unbreakable it glows and it's in, as hot as a star and is as heavy as a star and it's insanely powerful but also controlled by gara's mind galaxy mode this is literally when gara's mark on his forehead goes from road to galaxy when this happens gara's gets 10 times stronger 10 times faster 10 times more durable and his healing in fact is increased by no restart he becomes 10,000 times stronger, 10,000 times faster, 10,000 times more durable, and his inhaling factor increases by a 10,000 times mark. But this boost is just its base, and it can increase based on Gara's emotion. He can also infuse any jutsu he uses with the power of the galaxy. He can read minds and control them, as long as he's stronger than that person. He's immune from any sort of genjutsu except for Naruto's. Gara's galaxy power also has no effect in Naruto. Also, if Naruto allows it, Gara can borrow more power from Naruto through their galaxy link. Now to Sasuke. Sasuke practices his Magenko Sharingan, and now he can reverse Ninjutsu Genjutsu, making it a hundred times more powerful than when it was shot at him. He learns that with his Magenko Sharingan, he can create white flames and control them. These flames are 1000 times more powerful than Amaterasu, and they are called, one second, Shirohono. This is Japanese for white flame, by the way. I'm just going to put that into my script so I don't forget. So you guys get an up-to-date update of the script. And then after this, with his void curse mark, he can go to stage one. He gets a hundred times faster, stronger, more durable, as well as his healing factor. But he can still go to stage two. 
and but when Raymond full control, it looks exactly like his regular stage two, with the wings and all that, except for his skin is as black as the void. In this form, Ninjutsu has no effect on him, instead it's absorbed by the void, becoming his own chakra. As well as whoever he has whoever he's touched, all their chakra is disabled as long as he's touching them. Also, in this form, in the Sage 2, becomes 10,000 times stronger, faster, more durable, healing factor. And just like Garakan, based on his emotion, the boost becomes stronger and he can infuse Void into any of his Jutsus. When in Curse Mark Stage 2, any Ninjutsu or Genjutsu who reflects also becomes 10,000 times more stronger. He can also, with Naruto's permission, just like Gara, lend power through the Link of the Void, or the Void Link, should we call it. Now to Naruto. He has mastered both his power, his galaxy power and his void power, but isn't able to use them simultaneously, so at the same time. The only time he's ever done this is when Danzo pissed him off a lot. But as soon but he's not been able to do it since. But as soon as he mastered the both powers, a white dragon tattoo appears on his chest. But it seemed to do nothing, doesn't become a similar mark as a karma or nothing. But anyway, with the galaxy power. Naruto can fly, breathe in space, and move planets, stars, etc. Anything to do with space, Naruto controls. He can create new life, like new species, or whole new planets, or meteors. He can control gravity with a fall. He can use starfire, which is hotter than anything. It's the hottest thing in the universe. He can tear his hole in sp He can tear his hole. He can tear hole. Oh my god, he can tear holes in space and travel through them and travel in anywhere he wants instantly, whether it's to other planets or whole different dimensions. He can sense any and every living thing on the whole universe, knowing exactly where they are at any moment in time. With Void, he can disable anyone's chakra or any amount of people at the same time with a fall. So if he wanted to, he could disable the world's chakra. He can erase memories, either someone's entire memory or selected ones. He can create a black hole that sucks in anything he wants, all the surrounding chakra. Sorry, I just had to check. All the surrounding chakra, he can erase anything he touches instantly. He can, he can control someone better than Kota Matsuka Army, basically Shishui's Kenjutsu. And he can make someone paralyzed just by looking at them. He also learns how to infuse galaxy power and void power into any of his jutsus. But and also anything Sasuke or Gaara can do, so can Naruto. We now go to the Akatsuki Lair, where Pain, who has gathered all of the other Toad Beasts, which Naruto doesn't know of, as Jiraiya put his all in the train of Sasuke, Gaara, and Naruto, so he's been stopping monitoring every little thing. Pain has now given the order to make their move. We now cut to three years later, literally at the end of the training, and this what if is going to be a bit long guys, because the next bit is going to be the final, and that next bit will be a bit, a bit short. We now cut to Naruto, Gara, and Sasuke who have grown. They are at the village gates and they are welcomed by Tsunade who first commented, Gosh, how much you've all grown. She guides them through the village where everyone is looking at them, but no one realized Naruto, Sasuke, Gara doesn't realize why they're looking at them. Because unknown to them, Tsunade made an announcement earlier that the village's strongest shinobi will be returning. Now all the villagers look at them with amazement as they walk so casually to the Hokage's office. They get brief and inform that Gara and Sasuke had now been promoted to Jonin. Uh, what is that? I got a yawn. Uh. Uh, Jonin, yeah. Then they get told about the recent kidnapping of the Chinjurikis. But as she's speaking, Naruto yells, We have a visitor! And he tears a hole in space. For him, Sasuke and Gara jump, for him, Sasuke and Gara jump through. They land outside the village where they see a massive almighty push coming towards them. Naruto puts his hand up ready to negate it, but Sasuke stops him saying, allow me. He had to reach his void curse mark stage 1 and rushes at it, slamming his hand into the almighty push, completely erasing it. That's when we see pain floating above the sky, caught off guard that his attack had been easily beaten and erased. Keep in mind that he has no clue how strong that these three actually are. He doesn't even know about Naruto having a Renegade. That's when all of the other Akatsuki members try, f try and fly past pain to attack the leaf village. Gara laughs, and with a flick of his hand, his star sun rises, capturing half of them inside it, burning them up and immediately crushing them under the heat and weight of a star. Sasuke board says, die with the thunder, and uses Kirin, killing the rest. Except for Itachi, he wasn't with them. Naruto senses Nagato's raw body and tears a hole in space, and, and tells Sasuke and Gara to go monitor it. So they jump through and wait for, him, and they wait for Naruto to finish the fire. 
He activates his Void Curse mark and stares at Pain, causing him to lose his trap and fall out of the sky. Nada catches him with his Void Curse mark, but then he's attacked by the other paths of Pain. He activates his Galaxy Curse mark and effortlessly makes the gravity around them 1000 times stronger, slamming them all into the ground. He says you're a waste of my time and activates his Void Curse mark yet again and erases them all. Nata then tears open a hole in space, teleporting to where Nagato is, and he sees that Gaara has surrounded him in normal sand. He looks Nagato in the eye, immediately reading his memories, his thoughts, and he says, hmm, so you're a dry as old student, and you're going to use the Renegon to resurrect Madara, Uchiha. Nagato yells, how, how, do you, how do you know so much? And Naruto just replies, shh, 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 shh I'm still talking. Nar Nagato is then frozen when he sees Naruto activate his own running gun. And Naruto mockingly says, Wow, you have a running gun, that's so cool. I've never seen one, because remember, Naruto Nagato thought he was the only one to have a running gun. Nagato, Nagato goes quiet, but Naruto cri quickly gets bored and he tells Gara to release him. Gara, although hesitantly, does so. Naruto then, Naruto then grabs Nagato by his hair and says, Okay then, resurrect Madara Uchiha right now, let's see how strong he truly is. Nagato confuses and replies, wait, you want me to res resurrect him? That would mean the end for you all. Nagato laughs and replies, you see, not once in my life have I been challenged in a fight, and it's becoming very, very boring, so I'm hoping Madara is as strong as you say he is. Now resurrect him or I'll kill you here. Nagato then uses Rene Rebirth and resurrects Madara. Obito sensing this immediately begins to prepare, heading towards the leaf village. Naruto now sensing that Obito and Madara are heading towards the leaf village, turns around and begins to leave. That's when both him and Sasuke's eyes widen. Actually, sorry, he erases Nagato's body like completely. That's when he turns around and both Naruto and Sasuke's eyes, eyes widen, as there stands Itachi Uchiha, with blood coming out of his mouth on the brink of death due to his illness. Saying, Sasuke, I finally found you, we need to talk. Naruto smirks, happy for Sasuke, and he walks past with, along with Gara next to him. And he places his hand on Itachi's shoulder, healing him completely of all of his illness. And now that Sasuke knows why Itachi did what he did, there's no hatred but love. So after he, he heals Itachi, Itachi confused, but until he hears Naruto whispered in his ear, saying, he already knows why you did what you did, and he's already forgave you, so now go back and get your younger brother. Itachi smiles at first, until he feels an overwhelming feeling of doom and death. He looks over to see Gara with his galaxy eye activated, and Naruto using Kurama's chakra to make his eyes go red. They both say, but if you hurt him again, we will end you. They then leave. Itachi looks at Sasuke, ashamed, but before Itachi can even get a word out, Sasuke runs at him and hugs him with tears in his eyes, crying, You idiot, why didn't you come back? You could have told me after all them years of me hating you. I killed, after I killed Danto, you could have came back. Itachi smiles and says, Sasuke, Itachi smiles, as Sasuke looks up at him. Itachi taps his forehead with two fingers and says, I'm sorry Sasuke, but I'm back now and I'll never leave again. We now cut to Naruto, who's at the entrance of the leaf village, waiting for Madara and Obito to get close enough. As soon as he sees them, him and Gara begin rushing at them, both smiling excited, and they yell, This is the start of the fourth great, the fourth great Shinobi War! We now go to Naruto, who's flying at light speeds towards Madara, even leaving Gara behind. Madara is now talking to Obito about how the plan has ended earlier than the plan has happened earlier than expected, and now you're telling me there's a real threat to the plan. Who is he? Obito replies, his name is Naruto Uzumaki, he killed the entire Akatsuki in seconds. Before Naruto, before Mardo could even say anything, Naruto, who is now in KCM2, flies in yelling surprise motherfucker, with a Rasengan in both hands. Mardo is already blocking, like he's wrapped sometimes on point remember, but Obito attempts to use Kamui and Naruto sees this happening. His Naruto's Void Dragon tattoo begins to glow, and without it even spreading, he can now use its power, as in the gates of Beta's Kamiri, slamming the Rasengan into him and Madara. The smoke clears to reveal Madara smiling as he, as he yells, Naruto Uzumaki, this is where you die. Naruto bored by this, say, shut the fuck up, saying all this shit when I'm the, one who's, I'm the only one out of all of us who's landed up low so far. 
At this moment, Obita comes rushing in with a sword attempting to stab Naruto, but Naruto yells, Gara, he's yours! A sound wraps around Obito's leg, chucking him backwards as Gara flies past in fast. One sec, guys, a bit of Pepsi Max never ruins the video, does it? Oh. Gara says, understood, have fun with that one. At this point, Madara is smiling and says, do you really have that much confidence in yourself when you're already at your full power while I'm barely trying? Naruto begins to dial after while barely being able to get any words out. Who said I'm at a full power? <laughs> I ain't even at 10% mate. Madara and I better tell if Naruto's bluffing or not begins to waffle about how it would already be over if he had his Renegon. Oh, like he have his Renegon activated. Naruto then appears above Madara, putting him in a leg triangle choke and putting his hand over both Madara's eyes. But Madara begins to yell, No, don't you dare! I think Naruto is going to rip out his eyes. Just when Naruto got off him, Madara fills his eyes and he begins to shake. Madara, incredible. Seeing his reflection in a puddle, he sees that his eyes have now become the Renegon. He then goes, in Incredible, you're able to give people a Renegon as easy as this. Does this mean that you've joined our side? Naruto then replies, no way, I was just bored. If you're not at full power, what's the point of fighting? Madara then laughs and says, you remind me of my soul back in the day. When I will go against Hashirama at full strength. Naruto then thinks for a second and smirks. N for you lot, I'm talking to you guys now, it's not the what if. It's now time for me to tell you guys about one of Naruto's ultimate abilities that I kept secret. With the power of the void, Naruto can bring people back from the dead. It's sort of like Edo Tensei, but it's as long as Naruto wants. And as and however long he wants, and they don't drain his chakra or anything. And it's a bit more superior than Edo Tensei. And I'll explain. Naruto can have full control over them, or he can give them free will. He then yells at Naruto. I mean, back to the with now. Naruto then yell, yells to Madara, If it's Hashirama you want, it's Hashirama you will get. His void totally spreads along his body, and when Madara feels its power, he actually feels fear, while only being able to mutter, in in Incredible. The ground beneath Naruto becomes as black as the void, and slowly Hashirama, Toburama, and Minato rise out of the ground. The third Akage, sensing a chakra, immediately rushes towards where they are, thinking that the worst has happened, that someone had resurrected the previous Kage to go against the Leaf Village. He doesn't realise it's there, there to help. His sh Hashirama begins to speak. Incredible, we're alive again. He stares at Marada, is this thanks to you? Marada says, unfortunately I do not control death. But you can thank that boy over there, and judging by your similarities, I believe he's your son, Lord Third. I mean Lord Fourth. Minato looks at Naruto as tears form in his eyes, and he goes to Nar he goes at Naruto trying to get a hug. Naruto yells, don't touch me, you're a perv, I don't know you. Minato, who was at first confused, says, oh yeah, it makes sense. You was only a baby when you last saw me, but Naruto, I'm your dad. Naruto looks him up and down and says, okay, cool, but Jai raised me, so don't, don't try to take credit for the shit he did. Minato feels embarrassed and says, yes, that's right, I did ask Jai to look after you if anything happens. Toburama interrupts the conversation and says, so why did you summon us? Can you not handle him alone? Naruto quickly interrupts him, saying, Don't take the piss. He wanted Hashirama, but I couldn't figure out who was who, so I just summoned all of you. Don't try to offend me again, it won't end well for you. Tobirama laughs, saying, There's no shame in not being able to hand Madara. Just admit you need our help. Naruto, now pissed off at really fast speeds, boots Tobirama in the nose, and as well punches uh, Madara in the stomach, sending him flying away. Everyone seeing this is impressed, and Hashirama's holding back laughter. Laughter. Except Toborama who yells, you bastard, you hit me! When Naruto replies, unlucky you mug, don't try and embarrass me again. Suddenly, Obito comes flying past, screaming like a child from Madara to help him. As Gara is behind him, riding a massive sand tsunami, and when I mean massive, I mean massive, like skyscraper massive. Hashirama panics in, another foe, we don't stop him that, if we don't stop that tsunami, the sand will be destroyed. Naruto then laughs, causing Hashirama to snap at him. How dare you laugh? Do you not care about your own village being destroyed? Naruto says, just hush and watch. He yells, Gara, get rid of the sand! Gara yells back in a panic. I won't be able to in time, there's too much. I got carried away. 
Naruto begins to laugh harder as Hashirama gets more pissed off, and the third Okage looks away trying to, ha trying to not laugh himself as he knows what's about to happen. Naruto yells at Hashirama and Madras, I mean Hashirama and Gaara saying, Relax, it's fine! As his void march spreads along his body, and his voice begins to deepen. Naruto then yells, VOID! As the sand tsunami gets erased. And Hashirama to be astounded by Maturin. Why is that power alongside Minato who is insanely proud of his son? We now go to Gara. Oh, sounds like we now go to Gara, who has landed alongside Naruto and they're both again laughing about what just happened. Tobirama begins to scold them but just gets ignored, which hurts his feeling, he thinks. Did I just get ignored by a bunch of kids? Suddenly Madara runs past them at full speed, recovered from the punch, and heads towards the village. Naruto and Gara just watch him run past while doing nothing to stop him, and Hashirama yells, How could you just stand there and let him go to the leaf village? Naruto interrupts him and says, Didn't you just do the same thing? You, you're you the previous Kage, you funny guy, thinking of trying to tell me and put it all on me. You're just standing there doing nothing. You expect the kid to do it, I summoned you, as you wanted, to help us. <sighs> as they are arguing, the ground beneath, beneath them begins to shake as a massive cloud of smoke appears, revealing a massive statue. Kurama reveals, reveals to Naruto that it's the Ghetto statue, and it consume, consumes even the tiniest bit of Kurama's chakra. It will form and become the Ten Tails. Hearing this, Naruto smirks as he shoots out a bit of Kurama's chakra onto his fingers, and then like a gun, he aims at the Ghetto, Ghetto statue and shoots it into its mouth, making it transform into the Ten Tails. Kurama immediately begins to yell at Naruto, What are you doing? You don't know how dangerous that thing is! Inside Naruto's mindscape, he, Naruto looks at Kurama with a blank stare. Kurama goes, Ah, oh, right, I nearly forgot how strong, strong he was. Oops, my bad. In the real world, every Ka Kage there is chewing Naruto out, even Minato, saying, You just doomed the village, you don't know what you've done. And Naruto just puts his fingers in his ears and starts to sing, La 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 la. If you're already so bothered about it, go fix it yourself, and it's fine. I already have a plan for it. As a matter of fact, it should be happening right about now. As the Ten Tours begins to run towards the Leaf Village, the clouds begin to thunder as Kirin roar da roars down from the sky, biting the Ten Tours neck, stopping it in its tracks. All the Hokages are astounded, saying, Naruto, you did that! Naruto replies, saying, Nope, but that's my best friend, Sasuke Uchiha. And oh yeah, this is my best friend over here, Gara. Tobirama mumbles under his breath, saying, Damn Uchiha's! Suddenly, both Hashirama and Naruto slap around the back of the head. Hashirama slapped him lightly, but Naruto hit him hard enough for his head to slam down into the ground, making a little crater. Naruto then glares at him, saying, Don't talk about my friends. Suddenly, the Ten Tails begins to resist the Kirin, as it's getting stronger and stronger over time. And the third Okage says, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the third Okage yells, It isn't going to work for much longer. Naruto smirks and says confidently, Just wait. Suddenly, the Kirin turns black as Sasuke infuses the power of the void into it. The Ten Tails begins to shriek as it slowly escape, as it's slowly being erased by the power of the void Kirin. Or Kirin. It then uses all its tails to begin to slap, slam into the Kirin, trying to rip it off it, and eventually it manages to escape. It then launches a massive tail beast bomb towards the village. Tobiyama yells, "We'll never make it in time. This is your fault, Naruto." Naruto now getting annoyed that all the second Okage's remarks yells, Oh shut the fuck up for once in your life you old bastard and speak for yourself about not being able to make it in time. Both Naruto and Gara slam their feet in the ground and move at light speeds causing a shockwave behind them, shocking every single Okage there. Naruto appears in front of Sasuke and uses his void mark to erase the tower beast bomb. Naruto yells at Nar Sasuke yells at Naruto, You idiot! I was going to reverse it with my Sharingan! Naruto replies with, oops, I kind of forgot you could do that still. It goes quiet for a moment and then all three of them begin dying of laughter. It's in these moments that Naruto loves most about his life. Being able to laugh with, like this with all his friends, no, his brothers. And then look, and then they all look towards Madara and Obito. Naruto yells, go on then Madara, it's your bit, don't waste my time, I want to fight you at your strongest. Madara laughs and says, well if you insist. Madra absorbs the ten toes, and then he kills Naruto, Gara, and Sasuke. And that's the end of the what if, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you share with your friends. I'm joking, guys. I'm, I'm joking. After Madra absorbs the ten toes, he stares down at Sasuke and Naruto and Gara. 
He then orders Obita to go test their strength, hesitantly remembering what Gara did to him. He goes. But Naruto is not interested in this. And he says, I'm not fighting weaklings. Gara, kill him. Immediately, Gara, Gara's galaxy mark lights up. And he sends Star Sun to Obito. Obito attempts to use Kamui, but the power of the galaxy negates it, as Kamui is a like, space time travel. And nothing is superior to the power of the galaxy, which controls space and time. Therefore, Kamui is nothing. He is then wrapped inside the sun, being instantly killed by the weight of a star and the heat of one. <clears throat> Naruto then orders Gara and Sasuke to go back down, as this fight is his. And they back down. Naruto and leaves. Naruto then exits KCM2 as red chakra begins seeping out of him and surrounding him, creating a bright red light and as it fades, it feels Naruto and Baryon mode. All the Kage who's have just arrived, one second, one second. All the Kage who have just arrived, arrived are amazed to see it. Even Madara is intrigued by it and says, what is that form? Naruto replies, it's barrier mode, and it's the most powerful form you can achieve with a tailed beast. Although it drains your chakra insanely quickly, and if you aren't careful, it will kill your tail tailed beast. But due to my amount of chakra, I can use it more freely with less risks. After hearing this, Madara immediately made up his mind. If Naruto is going to fight his strongest, so will he. He begins to concentrate, as white chakra surrounds him, creating a bright white light, similar to the red light Naruto created. Naruto is watching this, is stunned and says, is he really going? Kurama interrupts saying, yes, Naruto, he's enter entering Barrow mode. Naruto smirks, very excited. Madara leaves the white light in a form we have never seen. The ten toes Barrow mode. Him and Naruto both smile and rush at each other. A clash between Naruto and Madara, fist, calls the ground to shake. Every single time they collided. As the power boost Madara got from this form was immense. As keep in mind, Naruto and Sasuke were getting bitched about by Ishiki, but then Naruto activated this and he started bitching Ishiki about. So keep in mind it's a massive boost. So Madara is actually able to fight against Naruto without being completely without the fight being completely one-sided. Naruto then yells, "Let's take it up a notch!" Activating his galaxy tattoo. So only Madara can no longer keep up at all. And while being amazed by this power, he isn't going to give up. He started using ninjutsu, can genjutsu, any jutsu. Anything that ended with Jutsu, he tried using it. But Naruto then deactivated his galaxy mark and activated his void mark. A race on all the Jutsu coming his way. Throughout the fight, it became more obvious that Naruto actually needed a swap between galaxy and void, and it was a hindrance. And it became a lot more clear as the fight was going on. Madara, who was watching this the entire time, quickly became annoyed with it and, yet, and stopped attacking the yell, Pick a form and stick with it, or better yet, use both of them at once, for fuck's sake. Naruto replied with, I can't activate both at, both of them at once. It just doesn't work. Madara replies, then, how about this? Instead of treating them as two separate powers, try to combine them into one. Naruto thinks about this for a moment and then closes his eyes. He slowly begins mixing these two powers inside of him, together. Thinking about all his good memories of his friends, his family. Finally, the two powers start to mix together. The sky goes dark, the entire world begins to shake, as the white dragon mark on Naruto's chest begins to spread up his face. After both uh, up, up, uh, up his face and down his body. After this, both his void mark and his galaxy mark activate. All three marks at once, being active. Everyone's legs begin to tremble as at the pure power that was leaking out of Naruto's body. Madara begins to yell, yes, yes, amazing, this is why I truly call power, I can happily die by your hands. As he says this, Naruto ap appears beneath him, kicking him into space. Naruto then fl instantly flies up into space and punches Madara out of their galaxy, out of the Milky Way. Madara, who was still alive in barrier mode, he, he was still alive in space, as one, I'm just saying the Ten Toes makes it, he don't need oxygen, and he, after all these punches that he's feeling, the Ten Toes barrier mode is healing him. He begins to mutter incredible. Madara clenches his chest with its scream, but suddenly, Madara clenches his chest with its scream pain. Naruto first thought was that his barrier mode is running out, but instead it was something much more problematic. Madara's body begins to expand and change form. It expands up into a bubble and eventually changes into a woman. That woman is Kaguya Otsutsuki. Kanji inside Naruto's head goes, is that? 
Before Kanji could finish, um, before Kanji could finish her sentence, Kaguya lays eyes on Naruto, all the marks on his body, the power he was emitting, and immediately bows down, saying, "Oh, great one, you have returned even greater than before." Naruto is confused, but Kanji begins speaking to him. That is an Otsutsuki, a species that I created simply out of boredom thousands of years ago, if not millions. It's hard to think that they would still be. A, it's hard to believe they're still alive. As Kaguya bows down, Naruto quickly gets bored, thinking I much more enjoyed fighting Nar I much more enjoyed fighting Madra than Kaguya. He then says, "Kaguya Otsutsuki, by my orders, your creator, you you will return to the vessel you was once in and give him full control over your power, supporting him any way, and it will you will stay there." Kaguya bows and says, "As you command." Very quickly, Madra's form is returned. And he's back, confused, stunned, and he's changed to his very foundation. He has tears in his eyes, thinking, how could I have been so stupid? Unknown to Naruto, all of Madara's memories had flashed, or of all his life, had flashed before his eyes. As uh, as the years went on, all Naruto, all Madara I mean, could remember was the dark memories of how his brother was dead, of his clan dying, but now he remembers the happy ones, the greatest ones. He now feels stu stupid as he has ruined all the relationship that he once had and now the only thing he wanted was to have them back. Now to last and says I just read your mind. If that's truly what you want I can give them back to you but first we've got to finish this fight. I'll only give it back to you if you win. After hearing that there's a chance that Madara could actually get his old life back before the darkness overwhelmed him. Chakra begins to skyrocket it and he zooms at Naruto for Naruto just to smirk and with a wave of his hand an unknown planet smashes into the side of Ga Madara as Naruto laughs. Naruto then flying through the planet to punch Madara is now enjoying the f this fight for the first time in his life. After about 5 minutes of this fight Nar Naruto is easily destroyed over 50 un uninhabited planets just by punching Madara through them or just erasing them with void for the fun of it. But Madara however has not given up despite all his attacks literally doing nothing to Naruto. He's still going at his full potential as how much as he can. After 10 minutes Madara begins to lose consciousness as he flickers out, uh, as he flickers in and out of his barrier mode. Naruto realises that this fight is now over, flies towards the barely conscious Madara and takes a deep breath. Madara then plays, I mean Naruto then places his hand over Madara's running Charagon on his forehead and the white marks on Naruto's body begin to glow. Naruto is now gifting Madara the power of Sunpo or Sunpo. This is the Japanese word for dimensions. For those who are wondering why I named it Sunpo for dimensions, it's because the galaxy, the void, and the dimensions are what make up the universe. That is why when void and galaxy were completely mastered, the next one Naruto needed to master was dimension Sunpo. That's where the white dragon mark came from. Nar Naruto has now gave Madara this gift, just as he gave Sasuke Void and Gara Galaxy. Madara's Rene Sharagam becomes white, signifying the power of Sunpo, and his barrier mode reactivates without any drawback to any strain. And he looks at Naruto and says, I have no clue what you did, but thank you. Naruto smirks and throws another punch at Madara, but he blocks it. All the although every single bone in Madara's arm shattered, it will heal, don't worry. He wasn't blown away this time, meaning that Madara can now withstand the force of a punch that can blow up and blow away planets. Naruto says the fight is now over. Madara begins to break down saying, no, no, please, I can continue. Just, just give me another chance, I'll win. Naruto laughs and he says, you can't win. He grabs onto Madara's collar and moves at light speeds where they can actually see another galaxy. He makes sure Naruto had to search for a little while to find one that had no life. He puts his arm up and yet again Naruto's voice goes deep and he says By the power of the void, be gone. Every single time Naruto uses that power as his void, it's because he's erasing something and the entire universe is erased. Madara is completely astounded by this. And Naruto does it again and again. He's literally erased three universe, three galaxies with ease. Naruto is above Zeno level right now. He could absolutely erase everything he wanted to. Like it was a fight between Zeno and the Grand Priest Fruz, and then up against Naruto. Naruto would still win, but I can't really find a way to show that power off. 
Murder now breaks down even more, saying, no, please, please, I, I can't give up now, there was a chance to get my life back. Naruto was confused at first, but realises and starts laughing. I was going to give it back to you anyway. I was just saying that so it's that you can only have it back if you win, so you'd actually fight at full power. They fly back down to Earth, and Hashirama, after one look at Madara's smile and face, can immediately tell that his friend is back. The Madara that helped him build the leaf village is back, and runs over to him and hugs him. Some are confused by this, but Naruto makes an announcement to the entire village that Madara Uchiha is now rejoining the Great Leaf Village. And if anyone disagrees, they can fight him about it. After this, Hashirama smiles and looks at him and saying, You have to protect the village without me, my friend. He looks at Naruto and says, Thank you, it must have been a huge strain on your track for the Kiva's here as long as you did. Naruto laughs and says, No, it wasn't a problem at all. You can stay as long as you like. Hashirama's caught off guard about this and says, Are you sure? How much chakra do you have? Naruto says it ain't chakra. He then lets out the power of the void leak a bit and it makes everyone's legs shake. And he, Hashirama's sweating to it. Uh, ah, I see. Naruto then thinks for a moment and after a few seconds, he goes, As a matter of fact, here. All of Naruto's marks begin to glow. And I mean at full power. As anyone who was previously brought back by Naruto, like Hashirama, Tobarama, Minato, they all begin to glow as well, the same colour as Naruto does. After the glow disappears, Naruto says to them all, You're now fully resurrected, my life isn't in your life isn't in my hands anymore. I can't count to like your life, but I can erase you, but it's not because you're linked to my power. You are fully alive again. I resurrected you back to the age of your prime, so now you can live a second life. Without worrying about me cancelling you. Now that the Great Shinobi War is over, we now skip five years later, as all the resurrected Kage replace the village elders because no one liked them pricks. Except for Minato, due to Sanadi literally begging him to take over for her, he became the Hokage again. Naruto married Hinata and they just had their first son. His eyes were weird, Naruto doesn't know what it's called but we recognise them as a Jogan. And actually, Kajian says, that's the eyes of the Shichi god that I made, They're, they are powerful, trust me Naruto. But just like Naruto has, this child had dragon marks on his neck and his chest. This was not known to Kanji, Kusho or anyone, that when Naruto passed on his genes to the next generation, Kusho and Ch Kanji had kids as well, not with each other, they literally just had kids and it got passed on with this, directly to Boruto. Naruto smiles, but behind the smile he thinks, Dear Lord, what kind of little monster did I just make? Another time skip to five years later again. Minato has stood down from the Okage, and the sixth Okage is... Gara. Gara, after living in this village for so many years, has very quickly fell in love with it, and he swore to give his all to protect it, and following in Naruto's footsteps, he married Hanabi, Hinata's younger sister, as they met at Naruto and Hinata's wedding. Sasuke married Ino, because I can't lie, I forgot, Sa I forgot Sakura fucking existed. <laughs> While I was making this what if. Everyone then, Himura has been born, she has the same marks of dragons as Boruto does and etc. But and if you're wondering, Naruto is just a Jonin, he's regarded as the strongest in the leaf village and he protects you with Sasuke as well. They're both known as the Shago Shadow Kage. We now cut to a faraway place. Where many people of the same skin colour as Kaguya, Moritsutsukis, bow down and say, Lord Ishiki, our master, the creator has returned, you may now step down from your position. After a refusal, the entire Tsutsuki clan rebelled against Ishiki, exiling him back to earth to be punished by the creator, who unknown to them, it isn't Kanji anymore, it's Naruto. While falling from the sky, Ishiki swears that he'll kill the creator and take his power. I know to him making an oath to kill Naruto and take his power. And other than that guys, that is the end of the movie. I hope you did enjoy, and if you did make sure you comment down below, like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit the notification bell so you don't miss another daily upload. Go down to my description and you'll see Harry Fox Snapchat, my Instagram, and my creator's YouTube, my thumbnail creator's YouTube channel. Go add me on Snapchat, follow me on Instagram, and please go subscribe to my thumbnail artist, he is the best. Other than that, guys, I'm not going to drag out this outro for too long. Please do enjoy, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye.